afternoon everyone sorry we're a few minutes late we had uh, technical issues <laughs> we got there in the end can everyone see and hear is okay just give me a comment as usual says so we've got seven people eight people who are you just give me a comment if you can hear We've got Grace, Lucy, Sarah, Charlotte, Becky. Perfect, yeah, thanks guys. Thanks, Steph. Okay, so hello. Um, today we've got Chloe Maybe from Magic Milk as a breastfeeding peer supporter. She's just gonna talk to you all things breastfeeding. As per usual, if you have any questions, pop them in the comments. If you want it anonymous, just message me. I've got my phone with me so I can ask Chloe as she goes along. have already had a few questions submitted, um, so I'll ask as and when, but otherwise I'm just going to let Chloe talk to you. All things to do with breastfeeding and enjoy and I hope you get a lot of tips from it. So over to you, Chloe. Thank you very much. Hi everybody, it's nice to see that there's so many people online already. I um, haven't really got anything set planned. So if you've got any questions, please do feel free, free to jump in and ask anything in case I miss anything. I've just written down a few notes um, and hopefully I'll get most things covered. So firstly, well done on considering breastfeeding. I know that a lot of people assume it's the most natural way to feed, but it's also the easiest. And just from my experience, I'll have to say it is not the easy option at all in fact it can be incredibly hard so well done for considering it and the more information you've got now the better to help you um, in your breastfeeding journey if you haven't started it already um so i want to talk to you about um what's going to happen to your breast when baby arrives and then how to establish the breastfeeding journey so it's likely that your breasts have been changing throughout your pregnancy anyway. Um, but a few days after baby is born, they become they can become really engorged, which means they become quite sore and hard. But that can also hinder the way that your baby latches on because if you can imagine um, that your breast is normally quite soft, when it's engorged, it's not going to want to move. And as a result, baby isn't going to be able to get that full latch and it's just going to slip off your breast. Um, so a lot of people find that if you can express when you are feeling really engorged, if you can just hand express a little bit, that can help babies latch in those first few days, especially when they're tired, they're feeding often, and you're both getting used to your, your breastfeeding journey because it's new for both of you. Neither of you have done it before. Um, and it's gonna take a while for you to both figure out what you're doing and get into the swing of things. So hand expressing can be probably the most valuable tool that you ha can have during your breastfeeding journey. And all you need is your hand. And it feels a bit weird doing it against the, uh, against the camera, but basically you do a C shape and you lightly massage and you just move it around your breast. And in those early days, you're not going to get much off at all. So don't expect to be like a tap and for milk to be flowing out because that's generally not going to happen. In those first few days, baby just has your colostrum, which is what we call liquid gold. It is just pure magic that comes from your breast. And babies' tummies are so so tiny. So in the first um, in the first few days, their their stomachs are the size of marbles. So they do not need a lot of milk to feel full. That's something that people worry about. I think it's a lot easier with the bottle because you can see exactly what you're feeding your baby. And that is why breastfed baby feeds a lot because their tummies are so small and breast milk goes through babies a lot quicker, it means that they're having to feed a lot more frequently. And it's also a safety device on their part to make sure that they wake up frequently in the, lo in, in the night as well. Um, so you will find that you are feeding a lot, especially in those early few weeks while 
baby is establishing a routine and also instructing your breasts on what to do. Um, because up until the baby arrives, your breasts have never had to produce milk before. So the more often your baby feeds, the more it's telling your breast to produce. And in those first few weeks, you'll have a lot of what's called cluster feeding, um, which means baby is just going to want to feed what feels like 24 um, seven. And that is why it can be really, really tough. And that is probably the period when most women think, my goodness, baby is feeding so much, I can't be producing enough. Or baby is never satisfied and they're not getting enough milk. I'm not giving them the right stuff, but it is, it's baby's way of telling your body what, how much you need to be producing for them. So you, you just got to work through those really tough few weeks. Um, and after the three week phase, things do start to get a little bit easier. Your body's got into a bit more of a routine baby has a really big leap at three weeks so after that it gets a little bit easier and you also know how you work together as a as a um not as a couple because that's a bit um of a weird phrase and um, as a pair you get to know how baby likes to feed you get to find what positions you're comfiest in but in those first few weeks it's definitely all about um persistence um Unfortunately, during that time, you're quite likely to get people who say, you're tired, give baby a bottle, one bottle isn't going to hurt. Um, and whilst if you plan to do that throughout, it's not necessarily going to hurt, but remember every bottle of, um, of formula, let's say, that you give to your baby means a, a less feed that your breasts are having. So your breasts after a while will think, I don't need to produce milk for that feed and then they stop so you're therefore not producing enough if you can stop or try and um, prevent doing any bottle feeds for at least a few weeks just until you've got your breastfeeding journey underway it'll make things a lot easier because so, just to jump in there um danielle did ask can i combi feed from day one so i'm guessing your answer would be try and avoid that would that be the same for expressing milk um the reason is she just her partner really wants to feed the baby as well so would you recommend her pumping the milk so he can do it rather than formula ideally um i would recommend pumping if you can um if you do want to introduce formula um then i would recommend pumping during that feed so if your partner's giving that feed a formula I would be pumping at the same time because you want to keep your breast in a routine, so to speak. Um, but also, if you are planning on introducing a bottle, in those first few weeks, it's very easy for baby to get what's called nipple perfusion. Um, it's a lot easier for them to get milk out of a bottle than it is for them to get milk out of your breast, mainly because there's, there's very little effort involved in a bottle. So if you could do what's called paste feeding, if you're planning on bottle feeding, which basically mimics the way um, a breast feed goes. So it's a lot slower. You don't give them that much milk um, and it's a lot slower. You let them have a little bit, you pause, and then you start again and you gradually feed them. That um, gives more of a breastfeeding feel to it. But ideally, if you could wait at least three weeks before giving a bottle, because you don't want them to then um, have a preference to a bottle because it's easier than to your breast, especially if baby is small, um, maybe premature, um, a little bit of a smaller baby. If it's easier for them to get the milk out of the bottle, you might find that it's harder to get them back on the breast. That's exactly what happened to me. And I regret it so much now, but at the time I was like, I'm just going to do it, it's easier. But yeah, exactly. I wish I'd just persisted more. So advice from me is to definitely hold out as much as you can. If you can hold out, then definitely do. 
Um, going back to the colostrum, um, Antonia did ask, how do you get it? And then Aidy's commented on the live video saying, do you collect it with a syringe? You can collect it with a syringe. Um, you can collect colostrum like I've shown you by hand expressing. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing it before um, your 37th week of pregnancy because that can bring on um, that can bring on premature labour, which can result in other problems. Um, you can collect it in syringes. I believe you can get them from your midwife, um, or you can get you can get um, uh, milk collecting pouches. You can get them from Boots. Um, some of the breast pump companies sell them as well. So you could collect it and put it in there, or you could just pop it in a clean bottle, um, a sterilised bottle, and keep it in there. You're not going to get that much. Um, so it depends on what you're planning to do with that milk, whether you're planning to give it to baby straight away or whether you're planning on just to have it in your stash of milk. It depends on what you're planning on doing with it. But, yeah... A syringe would be easiest because they come in smaller amounts. Thank you. Um, so another another way to get um, feeding established is to have plenty of skin to skin interaction, and it doesn't necessarily have to be with you. It could be with your partner as well if they want to get involved and help with things. Um, so if you can, I know it's not very easy if you've got other children. But if you can just stay in bed, stay topless, stay close to your baby for as long as possible, they will look for your breast as and when they're hungry. And it just it develops a really nice bond between you, but it also gets your um, your hormones going. So it encourages um, the milk to, to produce in your body. So that's a really good thing to do especially in those first few weeks when you're healing, whether you've had a C-section or a natural birth, you're still going to be healing. You still need to be taking it easy. And that is the perfect way to do it. Um, with a C-section, am I right in thinking the milk comes in later if you've had a C-section compared to a natural birth? It can do. And the same if, if you've had a traumatic birth as well, it can take a little bit longer for your milk to come in. Um, the thing I would suggest for that is just keep feeding as much as physically possible um, because that's what we're going to encourage your milk to come in. The last thing you want to be doing at that point is to be thinking, I've got no milk, I need to introduce a bottle because that will, that will completely hinder your milk coming in and slow the process down. Like I said, baby's tummy is the size of a marble. So you really don't need to be producing that much milk to keep them full. Okay. Um, another thing that ladies suffer with um, is mastitis. And that can be for a number of reasons. It can be due to um, bad latch. Um, I think you've mentioned one of the ladies has said that their little ones had tongue tie problems. Yeah, she's just asking for any support you can give her on tongue tie division. And she's using a nipple shield at the moment just so he latches better after um, the tongue tie. But um, yeah, she's just asking any advice on that really. Yeah, how old he is? Um, oh, how old is he now? He's about, I should know this because she's a client of mine. Uh, You've got a lot of clients, <laughs> I think it's about four, no, three weeks. Am I right, Danielle? Was he about three weeks? Ish. Three, four. Every day is merging into one for me. I don't know. <laughs> feeling. He's brand new, um, but he he was three weeks early baby. as well. Um, I would suggest looking at um, positioning of baby in that case. Ideally, if you could um, not use the nipple shields it will make things easier. I know they do have a place, but if baby's tongue tie has been corrected, you want to be developing a good latch straight away, really, and do it while the baby's still quite little. So if you can develop um, a good position, whether that's, um, whether that's laying down, that might be easier. So you lie baby on top of you. It encourages your breasts to fall into their natural position 
and baby will automatically root for for your breast. Um, so it means that because your breasts are in a natural position, um, it's it's easier for them to. Whereas if you're putting that bolt upright and you're pushing direction and trying to push a baby in another direction it's doing unnatural things to your breast so i would just find a position that suits you whether it's lying down or rugby ball so you've got their heads i don't know if you my arms so you've got their head here and their body is kind of behind you and letting your breast fall naturally just have to play around with positions but kind of because baby is so little treat baby as if they're kind of a newborn again you're going to have to relearn things, take things slowly. And also, your supply may have had a little bit of a dip. If they didn't have a great latch to start with, you're going to need to build up your supply again. So start from scratch, get skin to skin going, feed as much as possible, um, and make sure you're feeling as well as possible as well, which I know is really good effort and your feet are doing the time. It's easier said than done. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, so I was saying about mastitis, it's something that a lot of women get and they don't necessarily know they've got it until it becomes really, really painful. Um, so it, mastitis is basically blocked milk ducts um, and that can happen, like I said, if you're, um, you're manoeuvring your breasts in different ways, the, thing, the pressure that you're applying to your, to your breast, that can hinder the milk supply in areas which can then block the and you might find it happens, um, you might find you're getting a temperature, you're feeling quite feverish, your breasts are red and sore. Um, what I can suggest at those times is get in the hot shower, pop the shower over your breast, start hand expressing as much as possible to relieve the pain. And a lot of women will automatically stop feeding, either altogether, so painful or on one side the best thing you can do through mastitis is keep feeding through it and i know it's extortionate it, it, it's the pain being out of this world but if you can get baby to release those blocked milk up it will help so much but i think listen to your body with that one and try and take action before it gets too bad <laughs> Um, a common problem with latching issues as well can be brush and I know that if that's not treated uh, correctly in the first instance you can then pass it between you and baby so you need to make sure that you're all getting treatment as a mum and baby is also getting treatment otherwise it's just going to be a continual circle um, that can lead to pain in feeding that can lead to cracked nipples and things as well. So if you are experiencing pain after the initial getting your baby latched on, then I would definitely have a think about what could be the issue, whether it's um, a poor latch, whether it's a shallow latch, because babies should have um, all of this in their mouth. So they should basically latch on like that. Um, it might be that they've got a shallow latch You'll know that by when baby unlatches and your nipple becomes flat, or it might go slightly white at the end. It might take a while to get back to its normal shape. That can be a sign that it's a, a really shallow latch. Also, look to see if baby's lower lip fills outwards um, at the bottom of the breast. You basically want them to be kind of creating a vacuum seal. Um, so any telltale signs. And I would start looking at different things like repositioning. If you find that baby's got a shallow latch, unlatch them, get them to latch back on again and keep doing it like that. Because babies can get lazy and we can also get a bit forgetful. We can kind of latch baby on and then we'll be on our phone or reading a book or we're not necessarily paying that much attention to what's going on. So I think go back to basics, have a look to see what baby's up to and see if you can rectify any problems that way. Um, I've, I've mentioned nipple confusion, but another thing that 
stands up with when you're um, feeding with a bottle is yeah. the flow that comes from a bottle is much quicker than your than your nipple and your breast. So I would always advise staying on the, um, the like the smallest size teat with the less lesser flow because that will mimic your breast a little bit more. Um, and it makes baby work that little bit harder for their milk, which means that it will be easier for them to transfer back and forth between breast and bottle. Would you recommend any particular bottles? Or is that just a myth that they're all that with food and things? I think it's just preference for babies, to be honest. I think some babies are just that little bit more fussy, and I have heard a lot of babies tend to prefer the cheaper bottles that you can buy, like the um, kind of Poundland bottles rather than the expensive ones. So I would definitely try the cheaper end of the scale before you go straight to the top end. Yeah, it's just, you know how some say it um, is very similar to how breastfeeding is. is. Is that not true? It's just a bottle. I think, I think they're just little gimmicks, to be honest. Yeah. Um, babies will develop their own preference. Um, and I think if you can leave it, the, I, I don't want to say as long as possible, because then babies can also not want to take to a bottle at all. And it's, it's a very hard kind of thing to know between doing it too early and then, then, then having a preference bottle, which is easier. And doing it too late, and then they decide actually, no, I much prefer being on the boob. I'm not in the bottle with the bottle. Um, so I think it's just about being consistent, maybe getting your partner to do a bottle feed rather than you, because they're always going to prefer you for you. And get someone completely external to do it, leave the room, so they associate bottle feeding with someone different, and they associate breastfeeding with you. <laughs> um, something that a lot of people want to do and I don't know whether it's just an idea that it might be easier it might be less thought of them, but a lot of people want to express and be baby express men because it um, it's easier to do when you're out and about expressing can be really tough you're effectively doing the job twice but unless you want to um, express for a reason, I wouldn't introduce it for a good three or four weeks until after baby's born, um, because that can lead to an oversupply. If you're feeding baby yourself and you're expressing at the same time, your body is thinking it's feeding double the amount it, it does actually need. So I, unless for a reason, if baby's um, in intensive care or is unable to latch on for a reason, I would try not to breastfeed and at the same time just because it could lead to an oversupply, which can then result in a problem like the sky testing board and things like that. So I would tend to wait a little bit before expressing. Okay. And um, Antonia did ask, how would you store breast milk when you're out and about? Um, if you're out and about, you can pop it in a bottle. You can get the um, the milk pouches that I mentioned. You can buy them in big bundles for about twenty five, um, and they can do the measurements inside. They're also really good for putting in the freezer. You can slide them down the flat, and they they do compact down really well. Um, if you're out and about, as long as it's in a sterilised container, then it doesn't really matter. So that could be a, a bottle or it could be one of these pouches as long as it's clean that's absolutely fine and do need... sorry is that it room temperature <laughs> and how long can you keep it out for uh, so there's different rules for keeping milk and um, if it's at room temperature then you can keep it for up to six hours obviously if if you're out and about and it's a hot day then that's going to be less as it would be with with the normal milk um, but if, if it's on the side in your kitchen for six hours, that's fine. And then in your fridge, it's five days. And then if you've got a normal freezer, it, like a separate freezer, it's um, up to six months. So it all depends on what you're planning on doing. If you're planning on feeding it the baby later on that day, I'll just pop it in the fridge. Um, 
so it depends on what you're planning on doing. If you're planning on feeding when you're out and about, I would maybe take um, like a, a lunchbox and some um, freezer blocks with you as well, just to keep it that bit cooler. I would always follow baby's cues with regards to feeding because a lot of the time, and I know I was guilty of this, I didn't pick up the cues early enough and then baby got really irritable and then because he was so angry he didn't want to feed at all. So I think if you can catch baby before they get to that point, I think you look for things like they're making murmuring sounds and they're stuffing their fingers, they become a bit restless, that might be a good time to pop them on the breast um, and it makes your life easier if they're content then it makes the whole process a lot easier than trying to wrestle a screaming baby um, and that also goes with um, timing feeding a lot of people think that they should be feeding sort of every three or four hours rigidly and only do it at that point whereas a lot of the time babies feed for a lot more than um, it's a real kind of bond, it can help them with pain, all sorts of things. So it, it's, to them, it's more, it can be more of a comfort than just food. And if you can imagine, especially in those early days, babies being um, kind of pushed into this world, it's bright, it's completely, it's noisy, it's a different atmosphere. And they want to stay near to you because they know your body and they're going to feel most comfortable near you so being on your breast is what's going to feel completely natural for them. Um, and I know those early days are definitely the hardest but I think if you can get through those then you can get through absolutely anything just getting through those first few weeks I think the tricky bit they're tough <laughs> they're really tough and I think anyone who says it's easy is a complete liar because it really is <laughs> It's very rare I have a client come to the studio where they're just like, yeah, it worked straight away. They knew what they were doing. I was like, really? <laughs> it doesn't happen yeah, very often. It can happen. And I think it can be very easy to listen to everyone else's opinions. I, the one thing, a bit of advice I would say is listen to yourself and your guts. And if you think something isn't quite right or if it's not going quite as well as you were thinking, then listen to your own gut feeling not to everybody else because as well intended as they often are they might not say the right thing at the right time and that can be what sways you into bottle feeding perhaps because you're getting pressed from people mm -hmm. that happened to me when martha wasn't latching and they were like just give her a bottle just give her a bottle and i was like i'm getting that stress because they thought i should just give her a bottle that i did and exactly. Like looking back now, I'm like, why? But at the time, you just don't think clearly. You don't, definitely don't. And I think by looking to um, the support groups that you've got near you, I know that they're not going to be running in person at the moment, but there is loads of online support. And I think if you can prepare yourself for that support before you need it, mm -hmm. it's a lot easier to go and ask for help rather than when you're in the thick of it and don't really know what to do for the best and you're, you're hormonal as well and it's all new to you and sleep deprived and yeah it's very easy to think right i know and give them that optical because it is the easiest option mm. i know that with my little boy um he's not so little now he's nearly five but <laughs> When he was little, I knew straight away that we had a problem with feeding because we would go out to groups and he would be the one who screamed the whole time and he would be like on and off the room constantly. And I was dismissed so often because he was gaining weight um, and there weren't any kind of telltale signs of problems. Like I wasn't in any pain. He was gaining weight. I was just told he was being a bit fussy. Um, but he got diagnosed with tongue tie when he was five months old and I know I should have listened to my gut at that point because I kept saying it and it, and it just kept being dismissed so if you think there's a problem make sure you talk to somebody whether that's your health visitor or the midwife or going along to a breastfeeding group because their breastfeeding groups are amazing and they give you so much support 
and they can also take time to monitor your feeds and how things are going and that's so invaluable yeah mother's instinct it outweighs every professional absolutely yeah because after, after all your mother has to live with baby 24 7 you're the one who's monitoring the feeds constantly and you know when something isn't quite right so i would definitely listen to yourself and if somebody dismisses you just don't take no for an answer they know is a problem and that you need it rectifying that's it you know be persistent Definitely. it'll get better for you and do something in the end <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> um are there any other li- um questions from lady um yeah, Antonia, she did say, um, what vitamins do you take when you breastfeed? She thought it was vitamin D. Yeah, vitamin D. So you can take um, vitamins as the mum, you can get um, breastfeeding vitamins. To be perfectly honest, I don't know how good they are. Um, I don't. I haven't seen any results as to how good they are, but I think any vitamin, extra vitamins you put in, into yourself can only be a good thing. Um, but I would make sure that you're, you've got as much food and plenty of drink inside you and then babies get um, vitamin D drops as well. So they normally, you can get them through your health visitor, um, but it might be that you end up buying them if you get them from food as well. Um, she's just popped up with another question as well. Um, going back to the tongue tie, is there any telltale signs, the obvious signs of that? Um, yeah, so one thing can be that they're making noises when they're feeding and that's because like the corners of their mouths aren't creating that proper suction. Um, so it's like a clacking noise, which like, that's kind of what it sounds like. If you can hear them making those kind of noises, it's a sign that there's air getting into the system when, when it shouldn't be. Um, also things like if you're experiencing pain, maybe you've got cracked nipples, bleeding nipples, you're sore, that could be a, a telltale sign. They sometimes, depending on how severe the tongue tie is, they might have a really shallow latch. Um, so you might find that they're not able to open their mouths or even tilt their heads back that far to get the good latch. Um, it could be that they're having really quick feeds and um, they're not lasting the whole breastfeeding cycle. Or it could be that they stay on the breast for a long time but don't actually seem to be doing much very effectively. I know it depends on the severity of the tongue tie. Lots of babies do manage to adapt quite well to it. Um, but you might find that it takes a bit longer to get that good latch with you and your baby. You might find that their weight gain um, it's either quite slow or it, it their weight gain uh, they drop in the curve. But I think if you can see kind of where baby's at from birth and monitor where they're at at the moment and see if there's kind of a trend going on. Um, like I said, my little boy, he always gains but never particularly well. And he would literally feed for about two minutes and that was it. And But he would feed about eight billion times a day um but he was also a really angry baby as well because of this um it was like i was frustrated was having to put in a lot of effort constantly to get so to get the milk out um so i'd i'd take a look at your baby and see what they're like as well um if they're losing weight, then I would definitely be getting straight in touch with the health visitor. It might be that you pass the stage where they're coming to see you, get in touch with them and say that you think there's problems um, and what can be done. Thank you. One thing that um, I was told when I was pregnant is, I don't know, but I'm very flat chested and I stayed flat chested throughout my whole pregnancy. Um, I was told that because I was flat-chested, I wouldn't be able to breastfeed. Um, and I know people get told that no matter what end of the scale you're at, that you're either too flat-chested to breastfeed, your boobs are too big, you won't be able to breastfeed, your boobs are this, you won't be able to breastfeed. There, 
is actually very few cases in which you can't breastfeed. Um, it is a really small percentage of women who genuinely can't breastfeed. And the size of your boobs doesn't have any indication as to how much milk is being produced. Um, your body is so clever at knowing what needs to be done. So don't listen to people and what they've got to say as long as you're prepared to give it a go then I think that's all that matters. And make sure you've got your partner on board as well to help you. Um, I have had a question come in. It's made me laugh because it, I can relate to it. Um, it's anonymous, obviously, but she said that she's 38 weeks pregnant and her nipples have gone really big and dark. Um, is this normal part of breastfeeding? It makes me laugh because mine did and my other half said they look like burgers with Maltesers on. So <laughs> it's normal. I hope it's normal anyway now, I've just told everybody that. <laughs> Absolutely, completely normal. Um, in the first few weeks when baby's born, their eyesight's really, really bad. And a lot of people say that it's like, it's basically like a beacon. So the darker it is, the better. So baby will be able to find your nipple. Um, and that's why a lot of um, hospitals nowadays are popping baby straight on you and encouraging baby to find your breast because they will look for this and, and they know that that's where they need to go to. So yeah, completely normal, absolutely normal. They do go back to normal as well, don't worry. Oh, definitely. <laughs> when I stopped breastfeeding, they went back to how they were pre-pregnancy, so it's fine. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, sorry for sharing that information, I'm being laughed at, but you know, we're all going through the same thing, it's fine. <laughs> we all definitely do, and I think that's the thing, find people that you know you can talk to honestly yeah. and not just through breastfeeding through the whole kind of pregnancy and um, having little ones because you're all going to face things that you think is going to be completely weird and then your friend says oh actually I had that last week or this happened it's so true the amount of conversations I have with clients like really personal stuff you didn't think you'd ever share with anyone but you do when you're a mum you just openly share all this weird and grotty stuff it's embarrassing but Life is never the same. <laughs> <laughs> it helps though, because then you're like, oh, okay, it's not that weird, it's normal. Exactly. So, we're, so like I, you're all in it together, so, and that's what this group's for, just be honest and it's definitely. fine. Definitely. You won't and be just alone. Don't be afraid to ask for help. I know so many ladies who just suffer in silence because they think they're going to be okay before they feel like they should know how to do it. Um, and it's not the case, it's a complete learning curve. And if you think about it, a lot of our parents did breastfeed. Um, so we might not have seen people breastfeeding before because the rates are, are that low. We might not have been around people who breastfed before. So it's completely normal for us not to know the answer. Um, and like other countries, their breastfeeding rates are so much higher and they've got their family and their community around them, which is what you're creating here because they know they can go next door and ask their their friend or their neighbour, is this right, does this look normal? And we haven't really got that so much here. Mm. So we tend to kind of bottle it up until it becomes a bit too much for us, and then we don't know what to do. Yeah. And you worry as well that your question is too embarrassing or you feel stupid, and it's not the case. Like, like I say, so many of the mums will probably be thinking it or have experienced it. So you're never going to be the first person. No question is too silly. No, definitely not. Everyone would have experienced it at some point. That's Whether it. they said it or not is another thing. Yeah. Everyone has experienced it. Yeah. 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 Exactly, and um, that's another question that's coming as well, like the whole stigma about breastfeeding, the whole breastfeeding in public. Um, do you have any advice on how to overcome that? Because I know it is a daunting experience. It is really daunting. Um, and I remember the first time that I did it, and I, I made the mistake of going into a little cafe to feed, and I think what I should have done is probably gone into like a Costa or Starbucks somewhere really busy that's got loads of people going in out and just bogged myself down and I don't think anyone would have noticed but because I went into this tiny little quiet cafe I made I drew attention to myself because I was panicking and flapping and then I went, I went to the toilet and then realised the toilet was tiny and I was in there and so I think just go with a friend or your partner somewhere nice and busy and I know that sounds kind of counterintuitive, but those who are busy people just don't give a damn. They're not focused on you or anyone else. Mm -hmm. 
they're too busy getting their own lives. Um, you can get things like breastfeeding scarves and breastfeeding covers and things like that. And then if, you're, if you are really uncomfortable about feeding, then that might be a good option. But I personally found it was a bit more of a hindrance because when everything was new to you, I couldn't see what I was doing. So I was constantly under the cover trying to see what was going on. And I think I just I drew more attention to myself than I would have done if I had just been feeding. So I think just try and find some clothing that you're comfortable wearing. Um, whether that's you can get um, like shirts with a um, with a strappy vest underneath, and then you can pull the vest under. I'm still wearing them now, actually. Primark do amazing vests because they're really stretchy. But you can basically pull your vest down and pull your shirt to the side so that you're only you're only exposing the bits that you need to, or you do want to pull down like that. So have a play at home and see what you find most comfortable. I think what if there's less fat is definitely the better way to go when you're going out and around to the um, But go with your friends, get chatting, and then nobody will notice, I promise you. You'll end up finding that people come over to you to have a look at you or baby and they don't realise you're you can't even tell can you no definitely not it just looks like you're holding your baby and i think the more you do it the more comfortable you'll be yeah. um you can get bras that can help with things like that to reduce the exposure as well and um, that might make you feel a little bit more confident but i think just dress for yourself dress um as comfy and kind of conveniently as you can as well and just go in there confident. Yeah, and uh, this has been covered as well, so I'll, I will put the link in this thread. Um, just like clothes and things that you can get for breastfeeding in public, and um, not necessarily maternity clothing, but just clothing ideas. Like Chloe just said, layers. So it's only like a tiny bit of your boob out on show. And is it next Friday that you're back about your maternity bras as well? I think it's twenty fourth. Yeah, I think that's next, next Friday. Week. Yeah, so <laughs> same time next week. Chloe's back, and as you can see behind her. This is her business um, about maternity bras, pre and postnatal, and she'll talk all through that as well. So I'm sure you'll be able to give more advice next week about that. But um, if people wanted more information on that, you'll cover that as well, won't you? So yeah, but there's there's some great companies around that can that make um, breastfeeding friendly clothing. They might have um, like an extra layer that you can pull up, um, or there might be additional panels and things like that. Um, so I can always share some, some companies that I'm aware of that can do some really lovely clothing. Yeah, that'd be brilliant, thank you. Even like wrap over dresses, I used to wear, you know, when you just wrap them over and then you just yes. slip a boob out. Yeah. Definitely. And that's the thing, that's another thing, you want to be wearing clothes that you're comfortable in. So don't just choose things because you feel, oh, that's easy to get in. Make sure you feel comfortable wearing them. There's nothing worse than being self-conscious, feeding a new baby and being in clothes you don't really want to be in either yeah. the trick yourself ladies <laughs> <laughs> does anybody else have any questions at all it's quite a few watching but... see normally people think of questions after or they're just taking <laughs> it all in and then when the baby's here they're like okay now i have a million questions <laughs> until you do it is it that you realize how many questions you have definitely but have you have you covered everything that you wanted to say I think one more thing I would say is um, to all you ladies and the majority of you are going to be within Leicestershire, aren't you? Yeah. Um, Melton Mowbray has got an amazing midwifery led centre called St Mary's and even if you don't want to give birth there, it's all very natural so um, it's suitable if you're a low risk um, birth. But even if you don't want to give birth there, you can go and stay there afterwards and they give really good advice on breastfeeding. So that's definitely something to consider and to talk to your midwife about because um, the the help that you can get from there can be so invaluable to learn how to breastfeed in a friendly environment. It's a really small sector and you'll the amount of 
they're so knowledgeable. They are, they're amazing. I gave birth there and then went back there after having to go to the general and come back. But I, I've said it in every breastfeeding class that we've done, but they are amazing. I can't praise them enough. And they literally were milking me. Another thing I didn't think that I would ever let anybody do. <laughs> but I was like, just do it. I was crying. Yeah, she had my like, Yeah. Literally, I was topless. I was like, do what you need to do. <laughs> but yeah, I would not have even attempted breastfeeding without their help. And like you say, you don't have to give birth there. You can go back. And they're such nice ladies as well. Like you, you feel like you're just at home there. I didn't want to leave. It was amazing. So I can't recommend them enough, like you said. Good experience. And I know that so many people haven't even heard of them. So mm. definitely, definitely look them up and talk to a midwife about them. That's the thing. Yeah, you're not told about them that often. Um, I wasn't, I knew about them because, well, I was born there and I'm the third generation of my family to be born there. And then I had my daughter there. But um, yeah, in my first midwife appointment, she said it was either the two Leicester ones or Queens at Nottingham. I was like, oh, what about Melton? She didn't even give me that as an option. She was like, oh, yeah. I was like, oh, okay, well, it's a good job I'd said that. Otherwise, I might not have never known. So. Exactly. And there is a big risk of them closing as well, so anything I can do to promote them, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So the more ladies know about their service, the better. It is amazing, and it would be such a shame to lose it. It is. And they're so good with dads as well, which you don't find in a lot of hospitals. Like with Joe, they gave him a massive, comfy reclining chair, a pillow, a blanket. He got fed, he got tea, crisps, everything. So they, And at other hospitals, through my own and my friend's experiences, it's not the same at all. No, exactly. And like they were giving him advice how he can help me as well, which is a big deal for dads. I think that's the thing. I think a lot of people, both women and men, think that because it's just you breastfeeding, a dad isn't going to bond. And that's really not the case because dad can do other things. Dad can do skin to skin, mm. bath time, um, but even just helping you, if, even if it's just making sure that you're healthy when you're breastfeeding making sure you've got plenty to drink and making sure you're comfortable, then that is, you can't really ask for them. Mm. So I think try and get your partner involved in anything that you do or learn about breastfeeding because it will make it a lot easier in the long run. Yeah, definitely. And Joe used to say to me, every time she cried, he knew that she wanted milk and he just felt useless because he had to pass it back to me. He's like, well, I can't just feed her and take the pressure off you. So for him to actually help me in other ways like like you say just simple things like getting me my drink and my massive bar of galaxy and things <laughs> but because <laughs> you do you eat a lot when you're breastfeeding drink a lot and it's acceptable because you're like well i'm feeding a baby i need it <laughs> exactly you burn around 500 extra calories a day by breastfeeding so ladies eat all the cakes yeah eat as much as you want <laughs> I kind of wish I'm not now though. Now I'm three stone heavier than I was pre-pregnancy. Like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have taken it too far. <laughs> but make the most of it while you can. Because I'm like, oh, I've just had a baby. That's why I'm carrying extra weight. But she's nearly two, so I can't really get away with it much more. So, time to do something. <laughs> That's another thing. Sorry, I've just thought of something. I know during this lockdown, um, a lot of people are going to the wine a lot more because it is a really stressful time. Um, and I know during pregnancy, you're advised not to drink at all. But a lot of people have questions about um, drinking and breastfeeding. As long as you're not getting paralytic and you're absolutely safe to hold your baby, then you're fine with a drink or two. There's no need to pump and dump. You don't need to do that because the amount of alcohol in your system is going to be, in your bill, is going to be minuscule. If you've had a massive session and you're absolutely legless, then definitely don't feed because you're probably not safe to hold baby. Um, but as long as it's done in moderation, then you can sit outside, enjoy your glass of wine, and and not feel pressured to kind of pump and dump or feed baby formula or do something that you wouldn't ordinarily do. So definitely, you can enjoy a glass. Of wine. That's good to know because I did see a comment the other day, somebody asking this. Um... So how many, for example, glasses of wine would you say you can have if you're breastfeeding without it affecting the baby? Um, well, it's going to be different for everybody, but as long as you're safe, if you feel that you're in control and safe to hold baby, then you're safe to feed. Um, if you're a bed sharer, if you're mostly the baby, I would recommend sharing with them if you have had a drink, because you are less aware of your actions when you have had a drink. So you can definitely feed the baby as long as you feel you're 
safe to hold them and you can control them, then that's absolutely fine. So a couple of glasses of wine will be really fine. That's good to know, thank you. Yeah, I didn't because I'm drunk after one glass of wine. I'm such a light so drunk. <laughs> I'm a cheap date. <laughs> Brilliant. I don't think there's any more questions, but um, Chloe's in the group, so any more questions, please just pop them in the comments. I'm sure she'll be happy to answer. Yeah, um, no problem. Especially if people are watching this back later, like I know a few were. People are out enjoying the sunshine, so. I made the most of it. Oh, definitely. We don't know when it will change, do we, this country? Exactly. <laughs> but lovely. Thank you so much for that. Hopefully it was really informative for everybody and you've learnt a lot. So thanks for your time and we'll see you again next Friday at half past two. Lovely. See you soon. Bye, everyone. Bye.